Yo guys, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna do another editing tutorial. We've got my Inter360 X3 camera here, and we're gonna jump over to my desktop, and I'm gonna do a, a complete beginner's walkthrough on how I edit my 360 footage. So you can follow along, and you can see my workflow, and then adopt it to your own work. Just wanna make things real simple. I'm gonna go for a nice slow pace, so you can follow along at your own speed. I'm going to show you all the features and all the things that I do and what I'm actually thinking about when I'm editing my videos. So hopefully this simplifies the whole process and makes it easier for you to get great 360 videos with your camera too. So we'll jump over to Inter360's studio. So we're in Inter360 studio now and I have my clip on the screen. And this is a clip from a, a recent mountain bike video shoot that I helped with. And as you'll see here, the video file size is quite big at the minute because and it's quite long as well so i don't really want to use all this footage um in my clip there's a lot of fluff there's a lot of talking it doesn't really i don't really need that footage the first thing you need to do is select the portion of video that you want to reframe and use so how we do this at the bottom here we have our timeline and we can scrub through it by clicking on it and you can press the space bar to play the footage to find out where you want to reframe your footage. So I'm going to find the part where we start riding bikes. Okay, right. So we're going to trim that here. We're going to click this button here. Mark as trim start. So you can either click that button or you can, on the Mac, you can press command and the open bracket or like left side bracket and it will trim the start of your clip. And then we want to do the same at the end as well. So I'm going to quickly scrub through this clip to where we want the end point to be so I'm gonna say here so this is only like a 20 second clip so we're gonna trim that and this is now our workable clip okay so what I like to do now is click the um, back button here and this navigates to the start of the clip and as you'll see now we need to first of all set our first keyframe and this is going to kind of dictate where the camera is going to point now you you might be different because you may not be reframing mountain bike footage it may be something different like walking or traveling or something else but for this instance what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to the top right here i'm going to click stabilization type and i'm going to turn directional lock on okay and you'll notice now this actually turns the camera around and what the camera will try and do it will try and always lock the angle of the camera where it thinks I am pointing okay now what I have noticed with this is it's great for mountain biking but it still needs a little bit of tweaking it's not the perfect system yet I think Insta360 will refine this as time goes on and it will get better and also every now and again you'll need to recalibrate your camera because once this needs recalibrating then the camera will try and resort to like a different point and you'll end up having to add loads of keyframes and it will mess everything up and this is just what I've experienced so Direction lock is great, but it, it saves a little bit of time, especially for mountain bike footage. But if you want full customization, then you can turn directional lock off and you'll just have to add more keyframes. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn this round to our first keyframe and I'm going to mark as a keyframe. And that's just basically going to set where the camera is going to start looking. So then we're going to press the space bar and play our footage. And you'll notice straight away there's a, a change of direction. So I'm going to now add a keyframe at the end of the first part of the change direction. So I'm going to use two fingers on the tracking pad. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to get my handlebars in the shot. I'm quite happy with that there. And I'm going to press Command and K, which is going to add another keyframe. And as you'll see here, if we scrub back and I'll show you the first movement for spacebar. Okay, one important note here as well to note. Can you see up here, as we go through the clip, you can see at the top left-hand corner of the screen there is like a, a misty part of the camera. And this is actually the corner of the lens slash the microphone cover. So if you notice on my camera, I have some furry microphone covers, which is just designed to give better audio quality and reduce wind noise. And sometimes when, thing, when the camera is not completely reframed in the center of the lens, this is what happens. So what we have to do is almost like make some fine tweaks. I mean, we could actually 
you can zoom in to get rid of that this is going to be completely um, personal to what you're doing we can reduce that quite a lot and once once the video is playing it's hardly noticeable okay so you can rotate the camera so you can, I'm, I'm actually holding command now and moving the mouse so we can rotate things can pull it around and we're gonna go through the footage again again I'm just literally doing some fine tweaks as to where I want my camera to look when I'm riding and usually I try and add as little keyframes as possible and try not to bunch keyframes up too close because then you'll generally get like this jerky motion in your footage you want nice smooth transitions between your keyframes and this is the thing that will take a little bit of practice because it's just a, a bit of an art I would say what you can do though is if we click the zoom in on the timeline here we can actually see how close our, our keyframes are together and you'll see there's a little yellow line between the keyframes and this is the transition so this is what the camera is going to do between the two two keyframes and if we click that we can actually adjust it so we we've got all these different effects which change how the camera moves between two keyframes and you can have none I, I tend to use smooth dissolve because that's just this, this one I like but you can get quite custom with these different um, features um, you have to try it out for yourself and see but they basically the camera moves fast and slow or slower than fast and like if I if I show you now between these two keyframes this is the normal now if I add if I change this let's go fade in fade out fade in fade out and you'll see it's, it's only slightly different and you'll probably notice this more on different types of clips but I just usually leave mine at smooth dissolve so another thing we can do when we add our keyframes we get these different options here so we've got default we've got crystal ball we've got tiny planet and we've got natural view so natural view is going to take away that um, warped look from your footage it's going to be quite a flat looking um, clip which you may want to get out of your clip but I, I quite like the default view I like a little bit of um, uh, warpiness to the side of my clip just gives a bit more speed in my videos you may not want that though and um, what we can do though is if we go to default and we can actually pull we've got the pan angle we've got tilt we've got roll field of view control and distortion so we can really fine tweak how we want our clips to look and we can move in and out like this we can distort our image a little bit more or less. We can change the pan, the tilt, and the roll. So you can get really customized with this, okay? I quite like just to leave it as it is. I'm just gonna go to the next keyframe. Okay, so we've come to the jump now, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna try and reframe this so it looks somewhat cool I actually take my hands off here <laughs> it's quite cool I do like mountain biking I'm just going to go to the end of the clip here and I'm going to show you some more cool stuff so all I'm doing now is basically just fine tweaking adding keyframes as I go down this straight line just to make sure my handlebars are in the centre of the screen Okay, and then when I get to the, the corner and I'm changing direction, I'm adding a keyframe at the start of the movement and then one at the end. Now if we play this back just from where we edited, I'll just show you what it looks like. It's okay. I can actually see the finer tweaks on my keyframes, which I'm not that keen on. And this is because I've added you see here you, if you watch again you can probably see the keyframes are too close together so you can see there's a tiny bit of jerky motion there you go there's one there's another and there's another so what we can do is I'm gonna get rid of some keyframes just see what happens here let's have a look 
You can see the camera's moving a little bit more freely, and then there's a really sharp, pulls it back in line kind of motion. Which is, you know, there's no right or wrong to this, it's just getting the feel of your video how you want it. Okay. Okay, I'm quite happy with this now. So, what I'd then like to do is you can go to stitching here. Um, you can play around with the stitching. I don't never actually touch the stitching options. And then we go to media processing. So we can play around with the color and the clarity and our audio. Again, I like to do all this in a different platform. So I like to do this in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve because I use Insta360 Studio as a reframing piece of software. So I do this type of tweaking. I reframe all my 360 footage in Insta360 and then export it. And then I upload it into another piece of software where I make my videos and put audio to my videos and actually make a proper video and story out of things. But in here you can do some basic stuff. So if we can add, add color plus, it's quite strong when you go to 100, I think, but you can, you know, fine tweak footage from here. You can also add clarity, again, which kind of sharpens the image, which, which you might want. I'm not big biggest fan of. Um, it's quite limited what you can do with the processing in here, which is why I like just to do it in another platform. You can add a logo as well. So you can, you can add uh, logos to your footage which I don't know why anyone would want to add a logo to the footage I don't like that and then you can create a new project here and almost like manage your projects and then if we click here the file properties you can see all the different um, details of your your video okay this is kind of useful I do actually like making sure I'm I know what frame rate I'm at like 30 frames a second because that will come in handy when I'm making my video in the next piece of software in Final Cut Pro. So, what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna export this, and to export it, I'm gonna show you my settings. So, this is the export button. You're gonna click that, and it'll open up a window. I'm gonna get a sip of coffee, and it'll bring up this box. Now, I, we'll click export reframe video. So this will give you the video as you just saw it then. So this is ready to use in another platform. File path, this is just where you want to save your video. So you may want to just put it on your desktop or in a hard drive like I have. Then you want to change the, actually, sorry, the preset parameters. So I've created different presets. So what a preset is, you can actually set a defined set of rules when you're exporting. So if you're always exporting 4K videos and you want everything the same every time and you just want to save a bit of time when you're exporting, not having to put all these details in every time, you can actually save presets, which is great. Um, Bitrate, again, some people will just put this to the maximum, which is okay to do. Depends where you want to use the footage though, because if you're uploading your video come like straight from here to social media, like say Instagram or TikTok, what these platforms will do is they will crush your video, they'll compress it so it fits on their platform, okay? And if we export this at a really high bit rate and then try and export it, sorry, upload it to Instagram, if the file size is massive and it has a lot of data, Instagram will just crush it even more. So there is a fine sweet spot that I've found depending on where you want to upload your footage okay so for instagram generally i would go for about 25 megabytes in the bitrate scale if i'm uploading to youtube i'd probably go towards like 80. it's very rare that i'll export something at 200. you can do and then you can change the bitrate in your um editing platform so final cut pro davinci premiere pro whatever you can get really granular on those platforms um, but if it's YouTube, I'll probably just go 80. Uh, resolution, this is 4K here, so 380, 3840 by 2160, just leave that as it is. Um, encoding format, I always keep this at H.264. This is the most recognized uh, encoding for all these other platforms that I work on. Um, ProRes 422 is basically just like the highest quality you can get. And you'll see here, if I change this, the file size will go crazy big. 1.67 gigabytes versus 224 megabytes and the same goes for the bitrate here if you watch as I move the bitrate you'll see the file size changes so 
you can see 25 is 70 megabytes and 200 megabytes of bitrate is 560 megabytes. So I'm going to go 8 to here and then change the file path and just put this wherever you want it. Desktop and then click open and then start export and you'll see here the video will start to export and you'll get a progress bar which is nice and handy and it usually exports pretty fast actually this is what I like about Insta360 Studio it's a fairly fast intuitive piece of software it's not too complicated to use but it's great for both beginners to pick up and people who want to get a little bit more advanced with their reframing like I think it runs really smooth on most computers I've never had a problem with speed or like the actual platform lagging whereas I've used Premiere Pro before and that is so complex that when you try and upload and edit a 4k file in there or a 360 video it lags a lot and takes a lot longer so it's, it's kind of like frustrating you'll hear a noise like that and we have exported so you can what I like to do then is click export history and you'll see your exported video if you double tap or right click you can open in folders and it'll direct straight to that video and here we have our video I'll just play it we have our reframe 360 video really good quality video awesome and that's basically how I, I reframe my 360 videos in Insta 360 studio I will then take that video and I will start piecing together stories videos in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci maybe I'll do another video on that actually afterwards how to like add audio to your videos and how to actually make a video out of your action camera footage if that is actually something you guys would want then pop a comment below and i can make that video and um yeah if you've got any questions on editing or, or in insta 360 studio or anything like that or even these just cameras in general get them in the comments below i'll get back to you and if you are looking for the best settings for this camera i've also included a link below to get my video settings cheat sheet which gives you all my favorite settings depending on where you're shooting you just literally look at this chart i've put together and you plug the settings in and that's it cool so see you in the next video